the key business processes as we witness the convergence of major technologies. So today, uh, we have some guests, but before that, I would like to give a quick um, introduction on plug and play. And uh, thank you very much, Kyle, for uh, driving the slides today, which is uh, one of our um, uh, keynote speakers. Let me see. Okay, so um, at plug and play, you know, probably most of you know that we're the ultimate innovation platform. If I can get the, the next slide, um, so a lot of people ask us what plug and play is. First and foremost, uh, we are a venture capital firm investing in early stage startups out of Silicon Valley and uh, our uh, 39 offices across the globe. So uh, during this uh, early stage startup means for us is when a startup is valued at or less than $10 million, we come in, we don't lead rounds, but you know, we take that last or second to the last spot. But you know, where we come in is uh, a lot of uh, people in the corporate world, world they know that uh, we're the largest corporate innovation platform in the world, supercharging innovation with 400 plus corporate uh, companies in every continent across uh, 15 countries and 39 offices. The other one is for startups, we're known as the number one accelerator program or, um, or an incubator that we run uh, more than 60 uh, accelerator programs a year in uh, 19 major industries. So what we call ourselves is, is an ecosystem of matchmakers or uh, change makers, some people call it. And in this ecosystem, not only you find the startups, uh, which you know us as a VC or the other VCs are interested in, the investors are in this, mentors are in it, universities, uh, governments, corporations, regulators, and anyone that you can think about, they come and engage with plug and play in a variety of ways that which I'm gonna tap into in detail uh, a little further. So uh, plug and play is a one-stop uh, one solution. That's uh, what we call it. And uh, the main players in this ecosystem are the startups and uh, the corporates and investments. So what do everybody get out of this ecosystem? First of all, if you're a startup, you know, you can come and play and everything is, uh, is available to you. Every tool that we have for you to succeed and build your business. So uh, you can join our accelerator programs. You can come to our community uh, meetups and events. Uh, you can get office space as a part of the accelerator program and the IT support, accounting, legal support. And uh, you know, most importantly, what you need to build your business successfully is to, to, the, to the reach out to the corporations. Through our network, you can come and do the business development through our private deal flows that we set up for corporations. So, and for corporates, they come to us, they become a part of this network, they give us technology challenges, and we, you know, we show them world-class startups. That's why the corporates are engaged with us because our filtering uh, mechanism for sourcing startups and our due diligence model uh, gives us access to the best startups in the world. And through us, they can also digitally transform their corporates uh, through introducing the concepts such as uh, entrepreneurship, where uh, you can uh, start valuing uh, your team's times with um, ideas that they can work on uh, in their own um, you know, entrepreneurship uh, spirit. So the other one is investments. So we're engaged with a little over 180 investors and they come to us for the same reason that the corporates come to us uh, to find and have access to these startups. And we often co-invest with, uh, with VC. So if you're a VC, we have a specific team uh, that are working on the VC relations, as well as you know, we have a separate team that focuses on uh, pre-seed startups that are coming right out of universities. Next slide, please. So this is our global map. And uh, just to give you a perspective, I've been with the company for three and a half years. We did not have half of these spots on the, on the map, but now uh, we operate in uh, 15 countries, 38 uh, global locations, and we cover uh, 
uh, 19 industry programs in uh, many of these uh, offices. For example, our FinTech program runs in eight to nine different uh, offices. Uh, likewise, our IoT program, um, I think the last time that I checked, we were running eight different inter uh, IoT uh, platforms, mobility platforms across the globe. And uh, in, the, in last year alone, we've added uh, two offices in the US, for example, and um, I'm a part of the global expansion um, um, board and uh, we're looking at uh, 10 plus cities to put a, a plug and play in this global map. Next, please. So how do you engage, whether you're an investor, you're a corporate or a startup? So you can come and define the, um, the, the program focus, you know, if you're a corporate, and then you can come and attend our selection days, focus weeks, and uh, startup demo days. Some people call them expos or summits. You know, those words are used interchangeably um, in our dictionary. Uh, the other ones are, you know, activities such as, you know, if you're a corporate partner and uh, we can bring plug and play to your campus, we can do an innovation day and uh, we can just uh, uh, embrace innovation as a whole in the organization rather than your specific teams coming to Silicon Valley or plugging themselves in uh, in the events that we run around the, the globe. The other ones are uh, services. So the best way to find these startups is to work with our ventures team to identify technology maps in your um, uh, innovation strategy so that we can plug, uh, you know, we can plug them uh, in with the deal flow sessions or you come and you uh, reverse pitch it to a startup as a corporate. You can hold office hours. You can become one of the mentors to one or um, many of our startups that are going through our accelerator program. And uh, as a whole, you know, with by combining your um, technology interest area with other corporations, we can uh, prepare deep dive sessions for you. We can share corporate best practices. Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, of these different activities that you can benefit from at plug and play. But besides all of this, there's also, you know, this is an ecosystem. This is a, a network that, you know, we share a lot of, of the, the know-how, a lot of, of the, the knowledge that we have accumulated over the years. We're not consultants, but, you know, we're also willing to share what we have learned from the best corporations in the world, how they connect with the startups and how they go through product implementation or investment decisions within a, a, a corporate setting. So, um, with that said, I would like to conclude my presentation. In the next slide, you will find my information that you can reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to provide more information. Likewise, my, my team as well. But with that said, I would like to welcome um, Kyle uh, Elliott, who is the advisor of uh, Moeco and also the chief operating officer, Alexa Sinchikova. Uh, hopefully, Alexa, I did not uh, butcher your last name. Well, my apologies, uh, you know, from the beginning. No worries, uh, Alexa is just enough. <laughs> okay, great. Well, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. And I look forward to, to the conversation here. Wonderful. And, and thank you all very much for taking the time today to join us. And thank you uh, so much to, to plug and play. And um, we're very excited, Alexa and I, here to talk to you and share your, our thoughts and insights with you um, the plug and play community and the greater whole as to what's happening today as we look towards the digitization kind of revolution that's going on right now and specifically what's known as the information age or the fourth industrial revolution, a area and really an era uh, that all of us on this call play a role in, whether that is from the technology perspective, whether that's from the industry perspective or looking at how all of this comes together as well. Um, and before we get started, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to our team at Moeco who put a ton of effort into uh, putting into some last minute designs on the presentation. We could not have done this without them. And also a very big happy birthday to our COO, Alexa, today. It is her birthday and she's taking time out of her day uh, to, uh, to do this presentation with me. So big shout out to the team. Really appreciative of that. And also, uh, her, her picture fell off here, so she does have a, a picture. I do apologize for that. But nonetheless, um, you know, again, thank you um, for having us plug and play. And we're very appreciative of not just plug and play as a whole, but the new materials and packaging uh, community that uh, we were able to go through the program 
um, about a year ago and had an absolutely amazing experience and have continued to build a great relationship uh, and have continued great experiences with the plug and play team and organization. So Omar and Ali and, and Tiffany and team, again, thank you for helping uh, put this together. And so today I'll, I'll be your speaker along with Alexa, our COL. As Omar said, I am uh, an advisor to Moeco here. I'm also a co-founder of a few different companies and as, as an entrepreneur um, and have been working in the internet of things, innovation, uh, and really the uh, digitization of our current era for the past 20 years. Uh, and so I bring a lot of that experience and knowledge to the Moeco team who today is leading in a lot of the areas that we are gonna be talking about everywhere from supply chain and logistics all the way through to industrial 4.0 or IIoT, so Industrial Internet of Things as well. And just so you know, a lot of the materials, um, because of time, um, being respectful of everyone's schedules, we'll go through, but some of that we might go through a little fast. Do not fear, um, some of this stuff will be available. Uh, some of the images you see uh, will be available um, shortly after the presentation. Uh, so don't hesitate if you can't see anything, but uh, a lot to cover. So. Um, let's start at the, the history of, of kind of how we got to where we are today because um, things have kind of twisted and turned in the last 12 months, but it's good to reflect back and look even further as to how we got here. So looking at these industrial revolutions that led up to today, the first industrial revolution dating all the way back to the 1700s, 1800s is an important foundation for us. It was the first industrial revolution. It was the first time that we really began to categorize how technology uh, would start to impact industries um, as well. And just so you know, feel free to drop Q&A in the Q&A box. Um, we'll wait till the end to get to those, um, but uh, do feel free to, to drop them in there. I may not be asked, uh, looking at them in real time, but again, we'll, we'll get to them at the end. So again, that first industrial revolution was the first time that we saw technology really enter into industry, really start to change things on a global scale for all classes and economies uh, around the world. And that first industrial revolution brought us from hand production into uh, really machine driven power, whether it was steam or water, we saw machines introduced that started to affect the early industries of iron, agriculture and mining, really leading into this bigger and stronger uh, middle class, which took us into the second revolution. The second revolution was the first time the idea of technology or the technical revolution really began. And that was where everything sped up. That's when we had the faster transfer of people, the faster transfer of ideas, the really the greater productivity than we had ever seen before. And this is when machines began to ent enter the factory. So we saw the establishment and the growth of networks the early days of networks, right? We saw railroads and telegraphs, uh, these early networks, we saw electricity and the increased, uh, increased electricity grids and the modern production lines. Again, the first time that we went from hand to machines, machines to now factories, leading us into the third industrial revolution. And this is what most of us know as uh, really what technology meant to, to us uh, in most of our personal and professional lives. And that was the digital revolution. Um, and that's what we led into the mid, 20, mid to late 20th century. And that's when the digital communication and computer technologies were beginning to uh, be introduced. So things we take for granted in, in commonplace today, uh, internet, cell phones, microprocessors, this was the beginning of that. It was also the beginning of automation. And the idea that we were shifting from mechanical and analog electronics to digital electronics. So looking at how the mass production and widespread of uh, computers and digital technologies could actually play a role into our future supply chain and manufacturing processes. With all that being said, led us to today, the fourth industrial revolution, the thing that gets us not just at Moeco, but also plug and play and all of us on this call so excited. And that is because Industrial 4.0 or Industry 4.0, the Industrial Revolution, the Information Age, however you want to define it today, is really the culmination or the convergence of everything that has been worked on and everything that we knew in that third digital revolution coming together. 
this new world that we're moving in and that we're partially living in today is a 4.1 trillion and growing revolution. And it's the early days of digitizing the entire world around us, where we look at building maps from what was once physical into now what is digital, looking at objects, not just physically, but all objects, whether it was a physical object to a data, whatever it may be, all objects can now be viewed on a digital map and interacted with. And also that interaction going down to testing, adding data, building models, figuring out new use cases, removing and adding constraints, looking at how things can work or not work autonomously. This has taken us from the idea of just being connected through the internet and cell phones and those microprocessors we talked about to now living in a fully interconnected digital world. And some of the key themes here when we talk about Industry 4.0, I've highlighted here is interconnection, information transparency, technical assistance, which talks about artificial intelligence, decentralized decisions, think about edge, interconnectivity. The key themes or technologies and industries led in here are Internet of Things, cyber physical, again, taking that once, once physical into the digital world, on-demand availability, cognitive computing, Again, all of these things that we have thought about, we've wished upon, we're now starting to see. And in 2020, the game had completely changed. And if you're not familiar with it, you're going to be before we're done with this presentation and even more prepared for 2021 as we look ahead to the year. But what's even more important is go back to that third revolution. When cell phones were introduced, the small amount of people, the small amount of penetration that had them. Fast forward to today, almost 20 plus years later, right now, cell phone subscribers, cell phone, just mobile phone users are almost at 5 billion people around the world. 62% of the world's population has a cell phone, has a mobile device in their hands. Internet users today are four and a half billion, almost 60% of the world's population now has access to the internet. Think about what that does. Think about that internet, the interconnectivity and how with individuals having that much connectivity, think about what we can do with machines, with devices, with sensors, how we can connect individuals, how we can connect machines, how we can drive communication and data, right? Empowering the internet of things making it not just the idea of IoT, but really seeing the internet of things come to life. These are some of just a small, small pieces of all of this. And the big words you're hearing today and that we're gonna be using throughout is digitization. And that is the idea of taking everything that we know. And before this was referenced as digital transformation, We've talked about this in a number of other terms, but today it's called digitization. The again, idea we're taking that once physical and bringing it into the digital world, allowing us to do everything and anything we can imagine. This also gets exciting around smart factories, predictive maintenance, as we look at how we can use data and again, build models. And we'll talk about how you can create data as well, um, even if you don't have it, uh, to the idea of 3D printing, to smart sensors, and to so much more. So what I want to do is take, uh, with all that being said, take a quick step back and look at the innovation trends of 2019. And uh, Alexa and I were speaking offline prior to this and just kind of recapping uh, what has happened over the past year and looking at 2019. Uh, my comment to her was, wow, a lot happened, but Compared to 2020, 2019 was boring. We've, we've seen such a rapid progression, a rapid acceleration of, of technology and, and innovation in the last 12 months that we've seen to date. It's incredible. And if you look at here in 2019, what Gardner put together for their hype cycle, some of these uh, points that they've called out, yes, are still on those paths. Some of them we've already passed over. Others, are no longer matter. If you look at the innovation trends that we had in set at the end of the year or the beginning of, uh, or the end of the year 2019, looking ahead to the next year. In 2019, we had smart homes was a leading trend. The idea that homes would be driven by speakers as a new platform and a 
beginning infrastructure for elderly care for security and sustainability. Sounds exciting, but what more has that brought? And that's what we're gonna talk about here in a minute. Voice assistance, the new, the new user interface, that these new interfaces would be driven by data that would create new applications around health, around entertainment, around FinTech, around commerce. Edge, Edge at 2019 was just beginning to be a, a term that the IT infrastructure was thinking about. Now it's a 250 plus billion dollar industry. Blockchain was just a buzzword. It wasn't something that people were really considering much in 2019. It was just starting to enter the enterprise. There was uh, the early days of supply chains and what this was going to mean for the future of supply chain and manufacturing. Artificial intelligence was beginning to find its ways into not just autonomous vehicles, but also into the hands of consumers for applications and into our supply chains, into manufacturing. Mobility and the last mile. Last mile was everything in, 20, in 2019. We were looking at how last mile delivery would change the world, how mobility and the future of transportation was all going to be set up with new standards, new experiences, and autonomous vehicles. Also, Asia Pacific, the APAC region was leading in industrial IoT. We were starting to see the emergence of responsible internet of things, data privacy, security, being a part of that IT infrastructure, working together in its early fashion with bots and working with things autonomously. Retail was becoming, beginning to be reinvented looking at again not just last mile delivery but how can we take data and insights and apply that to the future of what retail experiences or footprints look like but also the idea of o to o or online to offline which was a term coined by alibaba's jack ma the idea that you would begin your journey online and finish it offline you would start shopping online you would begin filling up your basket you'd go to the store put a few more things in walk home and all of those deliveries from the online to the offline would all be arriving at your home before you got there. And health, a continual trend year over year, but in 2019, this the idea was really around just increased tracking and the rise or early rise of, of consumer-driven health. But 2019 gave us a base, it gave us a foundation. Little did we know we would enter this true, true version of the fourth industrial revolution, our new digitized world where everything we just talked about would grow 10x, that we would see this massive acceleration of all of these technologies, this convergence of all of this stuff start to hit industries in ways that we had only talked about in the boardrooms, we had only talked about in uh, meetings, we'd only talked about on stage, but no, now, now this is actually happening. Now these are being applied in real use cases. These are being applied in real industries and us as consumers or as enterprise are starting to see the results of this as well. And so now we look at here as we come into Q4 of 2020, what are the innovation trends? What has been a trend this year, but also what is looking ahead to 2021? And as we break it down, Edge, I mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, but edge edge is now here it is now not just a topic to be passed by it is now something that is should be considered in all of your technical uh plans or infrastructures and when i talk about edge what we're what we're saying is we're looking beyond the basics of connectivity and looking to 5g looking to 6g looking at narrowband IoT and LoRa, looking at these additional connection points, looking at the idea that anything can be a sensor and that no matter where you are stretched in the smallest of regions to the stars and far beyond, that there is connectivity and that there is a way to relay data back and process it, not just on the device, but also make sure that that data continues to get pushed to where it needs to go, has real-time notifications, has real-time actions applied to it. I may sound a little excited, but I tell you what, you, 
research how big of an impact this has. And again, I'll show you here in just a moment. And the fact that this is already looking to be on pace for a $250 billion industry in the coming few years, this, this has to be a part of your mentality as you're thinking about this new digital world that we're moving into. Blockchain. Blockchain now is a part of the technical stack, whether it be at the uh, distributed ledger side, whether it be blockchain, whether it be distributed or decentralized pieces of the blockchain landscape, it is now there. And it's no longer about private versus public blockchains. It is no longer about having to have it all. Instead, what we are starting to begin to see is how the landscape is opening things up where it can be about storage, it can be about identity, it can be about an industry, it can be about an infrastructure. That now the technology has begun improving and entering real applications and use cases for industries uh, globally as well. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has come a long way. Uh, many of you that are listening probably would, would uh, argue that AI has been here for decades. And you're right, it has been but we're finally beginning to see AI applied in ways that we could only imagine with continuous intelligence, beginning to understand how things are happening, where humans are bringing or bridging the gaps with artificial intelligence, training models, and then leaning on AI to take over and take on that autonomous lead and make actions and decisions independently of human interaction. And we're beginning to see this in the manufacturing and supply chain process as well. Industrial IoT, continuing to see growth in supply chain governance, security, and industrial IoT as a whole. It's no longer led by the Asia Pacific region. It's now a global um, trend and something that all areas around the world are solely focused on leading, and especially here in 2020 as things began to look at a little bit more or re relook a little bit more locally versus just globally uh, dependent. Robotics and manufacturing. We've seen the marriage, we've seen how it works, and we see that it works very well together. And again, it's not just about Southeast Asia and that that is the area that this dominates. Instead, we're starting to see this on a very, very big scale. And we're starting to see also this hyper-localization of manufacturing. We're starting to see dynamic value networks starting to introduce. So you can order something online, have it manufactured locally and distributed to you locally. This idea of all of this, again, converging together. Digital twins. When we looked at this in earlier in the year, it was just about digital twins. Taking, again, that once physical and creating a digital representation of it. Well, now, as we come into the year looking to 2021, it goes beyond that. Digital twins look to digital assets, to, to digital avatars. Again, building that map of the digital representation of everything that you have, from your infrastructure to your, your brick and mortar to your entire supply chain. Digitizing all of that and then interacting with it. Again, adding, removing constraints, testing use cases with data you have, or a new term that's being uh, used is synthetic data. The idea of creating new data and new uh, scenarios based on whatever you would like as well. And then digital avatars. This is actually kind of a unique trend we're starting to see pop up right now. And that is the digital representation of ourselves. And the digital representation of ourselves is very important. So if you're out there thinking in anything selling to consumer, fashion, et cetera, what we are beginning to see is the rise of the direct to avatar model versus just the direct to consumer. And I, I trust me that this is a new rising thing to look at for 2021 and a few years beyond that, where now customers will be not just purchasing products for themselves, but also their digital representations. So we're starting already to see in the fashion industry, this digitized, res, uh, this digitized representation of their once physical goods copied into that digital form so they can sell two versions of the same thing as consumers want both. Autonomous from vehicles to IoT. So again, as I mentioned, we're starting to see 
this more and more. Artificial intelligence is playing a role in every industry that we've talked about, we will talk about, and we will continue to talk about. And autonomous or autonomy will play a role in that. And artificial intelligence will drive that along with the power of data. Uh, logistics, we're seeing faster, hyper-localized micro distribution and dynamic value networks. These localized uh, logistics centers um, that are really focusing on that faster, get the consumer, get what needs to be done in someone's hands faster and quicker than anybody else. Uh, immersion, immersive. We're starting to see, and we, we've actually seen a lot of this here in 2020, um, where AR and VR, augmented and virtual reality, are actually coming into the enterprise. Key thing, consumer versus enterprise. Consumer, consumer is still a few years off. It's mostly focused around gaming and early interactions, but it's still a little bit off. The enterprise, this is where this gets exciting. And we're not just talking about telepresence and a similar meeting experience we're having now. We're talking about surgeries, we're talking about spinal surgeries that are handled in an AR VR world. We're talking about the redesign of the office space, we're talking about the new emergence of an education model, the distributed life from work to social to entertainment. Also, NASA and Facebook are playing a huge role in this. I already mentioned Facebook's new virtual office space leading into uh, a new VR experience. NASA starting to use VR and AR in space on the space station to handle some of the maintenance efforts uh, up, up in the air as well. Space, speaking of it, we're looking to the stars and much further beyond. And as I've had a number of conversations, what I continually get reminded with investors is that the early space race uh, that we've, we all remember actually helped drive a lot of the technologies that powered that digital revolution. Well, now we're starting to see that again, where there's a lot of technology that's being put into this next iteration of space and getting us to not just low over it, but also to the beyond the stars and bringing that back down. We're starting to see more, uh, more introduction of telecommunications where today we have about two plus thousand satellites and pushing on the bounds in the next five years of 50,000 satellites. We're seeing the early introductions of um, human tissue printing uh, as well. So getting into bio and, and the future of med tech and, and genomics. Uh, and we're also beginning to see new introductions of energy and energy resources, whether that be storing or micro energy uh, as well. And then voice and voice assistance. This has not gone away. Um, if anything, it's starting to pick up in a different way. Um, we, we still have those smart speakers in our homes. We're still interacting with them. The future of voice assistance is clear that it will be a part of the user interface. Where it goes from here is still unknown. What those applications are gonna be, it's open. It's a complete open book in a very exciting way because so much has been redefined here in this past year um, as well. And also I'll just add one other, and, and that's a, a 12th trend and that's sustainability. We had this in 2019, we had this in 2018, now looking ahead, sustainability is still a very important uh, part of this new digitized revolution. As we put forth all this technology, we converge all of this together, sustainability is still a major part of that equation. Vogue just put out a survey that Generation Z will pay 50% more, 50% more for something sustainably made than the generations previous to them. So think about that when it comes to those products that you're building, that you're either taking once physical or digital, that there's still a markup that Generation Z and others are willing to pay for that uh, as well. Um, we're also uh, seeing more around uh, energy security and sustainability as we move uh, into 2020 and 21. So talking about edge and, and, and going beyond the future of connectivity, and this is a landscape that a partner company of ours uh, and mine, uh, Topio Networks, has put together mapping out over 600 companies into the edge space along with us here in, at Moeco and looking at where this industry is going. Right now, we're starting to see almost 60, $65 billion being put into the future of connectivity, where 5G takes us from what today's 4G is about one gigabit per second. 5G is looking to push us beyond 20 gigabits per second, offering latency at speeds lower than one millisecond. That use cases 
in this area that you want to be paying attention to include autonomous vehicles at the source processing. So we're seeing real-time information, real-time decisions on the vehicles themselves, healthcare going from machine to human interaction. So those wearable devices, those connected IoT sensors that we were all wearing, we are now the data sources. We are now the user-generated data. We are that human element that is collecting data that's finally being sent back, processed in some way, and provided some type of intelligence, whether it's directed from humans or soon in the near coming future, well, actual insights that are derived based on uh, predictive models that are built. VR and AR, we're still seeing a lot more happening in this. Manufacturing, industrial equipment, is now going to be and is empowered to make decisions without human intervention. We talked about this in, early, in the early version about what this means and also starting to see more applications around finance uh, as well. Um, tele, Telefonica, Qualcomm, uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, Palo Alto Networks, so many companies are already entering this space. Um, if you're focused on the cloud at all, uh, Amazon and Microsoft, so AWS and Azure respectfully, uh, are looking to actually grow uh, their edge computing businesses about $7 billion in the coming uh, few years, um, and that more than half of the edge data centers will actually be on-prem um, by 2025 uh, as well, and the uh, 20 to 25% of that will be hosted by telcos. So if you look at how things are going to be redistributed, the cloud services of today kind of own this world. Uh, heading into the next four or five years, a lot of that is going to start to shift to edge data centers where they're on premise. So on your, in your infrastructure, which is something we focus on here as well uh, at Moeco. And also looking at a portion of that uh, switching on to telcos and, and internet providers. Uh, and jumping uh, quickly into to blockchain, uh, this is just something I, I, I want to touch on because there couldn't be a better time. There couldn't be a better time to focus on blockchain. There could not be a better time to focus on the financial industry and the re and edge and just general telecommunication infrastructures in general, because the entire world, the entire industries themselves are all focused on upgrading these once established, now outdated infrastructures all at the same time, uh, which is just very, very exciting. And we are still in the early days of some things around this this infrastructure and around this technology. Um, we are, funny enough, starting to see the re re resurgence of QR codes in the Midwest, where in Asia, those are a dominant payments uh, method or gateway. Uh, in the Midwest here in the United States, we are starting to see that um, being reused now here in 2020 uh, as well. Uh, we're also starting to see the rise of uh, non-fungible tokens, so NFT ecosystems, and that plays back into those digital assets we mentioned before. Ernst & Young recently released their first business application on the Ethereum blockchain, pushing towards that future of distributed and decentralized applications that not just live in this world of, of blockchain, but also focus on the world of edge, the future of work, and also the future of logistics and supply chains. We've got MasterCard who's pushing out platforms along with Visa for testing of central bank digital currencies. We've got major countries that are pouring in hundreds of billions to trillions of dollars focused on redesigning their infrastructures with blockchain as a core piece of that as well. And now I want to turn it over to our CEO Alexa. And I know I just covered a ton of different technologies and I showed a lot of images and a lot to process as to where we are today and where we're going. But as Alexa takes over here, we'll recap in just a short few minutes and we'll tell you what's next and how this can be applied and where this can be applied to your business. And so with that, Alexa, uh, are you there? Everything okay? And are you ready to go? Yeah, ready to step in. Thanks, Kyle. Um, and I'm really happy that Kyle gave you a very good overview of what digitalization process is and really great insights of the Industry 4.0, uh, where Moeco takes a great role these days. And I'm uh, going to the of um, practical aspects of that or, and how it could be applied to real businesses. And being a part of the plug and play ecosystem, we were able to, to talk to a lot of corporate partners of plug and play and, and get the idea of the core problem that they have. 
And this problem is real. Uh, a lot of companies who own physical assets, uh, they do have a lot of expenses for this um, asset management and maintenance as well. Um, and uh, there is still a lot of human effort that is involved in this process. And as we go through the 2020 changes, uh, and we all know that uh, the COVID-19 just accelerated uh, this shift from the physical world to the uh, transferring it into the digital picture of the um, physical infrastructure that a lot of companies have. And um, as we at Moico, we provide the solution to uh, digitize the company's assets and uh, create a, uh, a funnel of a real-time data collection to use this data uh, for the benefit of our clients. Uh, we provide the additional uh, opportunities for the company to use this data and save costs, uh, reducing the uh, maintenance uh, costs within the company uh, and really provide the value of digitalization and owning more data uh, from their physical infrastructure. Improving maintenance process, sometimes from the calendar-based maintenance uh, of their physical assets to the usage based where we know what was used, when, where, and that's the exact data uh, flowing real time. Imagine that. And thanks Kyle for again, for bringing in the, the picture of the future. And now I'm, I'm delivering this picture to you that the future is real and it's happening now. And um, a lot of times companies would use additional data from the physical assets to improve the environment and uh, the customer success and customer interaction sometimes with uh, several use cases. I'm not going go to go really deep into that, but there is an additional value of the data. That's what I wanna uh, reflect. And uh, if we go to the next slide, I would provide the um, like a solution and how it looks from inside and uh, how we actually, what, what, how the digitalization process looks like. Uh, basically, we use a simple language of uh, describing it as we make the physical assets smart. And this smart asset starts to collect the data and reflect the data uh, in a dashboard. Uh, we do it in a non-invasive way, which is very important because we have um, great experience in, in both uh, hardware and software. We're able to create the special smart tags or you ca we call it sensors to collect this data. Uh, and uh, we create this special sensors because uh, we know what kind of data is valuable in most of cases. That's why I call it special sensors and they're also um, have to reflect the special features, for example, long battery life, or uh, they, they should be just attached to any asset without um, a rebuilding the whole infrastructure or uh, break any uh, business processes that the company is following for years and years. We try to make it non-invasive. So imagine the tech is just attached to any physical asset that the company might have starting from the iron pipes to uh, the pallets uh, within the, uh, the company's um, assets. So um, then the sensors would uh, transfer the data to, to the software platform. And again, we, we provide this uh, software platform. Of course, we also take care of the connectivity and how this data flows into the platform. So it could be um, a system that is seamless and the client actually just gets the data uh, and, and uh, sees the digital picture of their infrastructure without any pain, right? So we have to take care of the connectivity. And here our technical team steps in and we have a great experience in how to better um, deliver this data. So we use, there was a, a question in the chats, what's, what kind of connectivity we use and we are 
connectivity agnostic, as I say. Uh, we use Bluetooth, LoRa, we, we use mobile networks to deliver this data to the platform. What is unique about Marco is that we provide 100% data ownership, uh, which is very important for our clients as we work with the Fortune 500 companies, data is everything for them, and that's very sensitive part. So uh, the, the data is encrypted, we use blockchain as an underlying technology. As Kyle mentioned, uh, that's the right time to bring in this for the data protection. So uh, we implement this data directly uh, to the, the client's um, uh, IT infrastructure. We, we use the platform sometimes as a middleware to um, um, integrate the data into the existing system. So we, we work with a number of platforms as uh, SAP Wonder where Hexagon, depending on the client's infrastructure. And again, to make it seamless for the client, we, um, we create this data flow right into the system the client is used for. The, the, if the client is used to, is used to um, SAP, that should be there. So mainly the digitalization process um, means data enrichment of the existing ecosystem and um, understanding what is happening with the physical assets. Um, and if we go to the next slide, I'll, I'll show you what the product uh, looks like. Um, so as a result, the corporate uh, client gets the dashboards with um, all the processes digitized. As we say, we, we just provide what is happening in the real world and we're bringing it into the digital world and reflect it in a simple dashboard. Uh, so that would be one of the examples of the uh, client's dashboard that mm, sometimes could be uh, customized uh, based on, on the industry we work with. And uh, Maika works with a number of clients um, from plug and play. I would say that um, we, we now have a lot of clients that we started interaction at plug and play office uh, or plug and within the plug and play ecosystem. And uh, a lot of times this would be um, pilot projects or commercial projects that we um, do not publicly talk about, like what kind of problems we solve for the specific company. But in general, the digitalization process is a, is a game changer. And we found out that a lot of companies are willing to step into this revolution. And um, Industry 4.0 is, is a revolution that is here. And we can't ignore that. Uh, and to be up to the progress and be very much into what's happening now and how it would be reflected in the nearest future and to be able to uh, to be as um, quick as the competitors, to be as efficient as any company should be these days using the newest technologies. I, I believe that Marco is a great partner, is a great technical partner, having this IoT experience and, and great cases to um, collaborate with us further on. So if you have any kind of questions of what are the examples or what would be the case studies you guys uh, can share? I would be happy to do that, but uh, unfortunately, I believe not. We have a series of webinars where we're gonna share the content um, um, in, a, in a very sophisticated way. So we, we will have, we will definitely have a dedicated session of what, what kind of the uh, real-time use cases and, and applications we can share with you further on. I will give a word back to Kyle um, and um, we're gonna start accepting more questions from uh, in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them. Awesome, thank you so much, Alexa. And before we get to Q&A, to, to Alexa's point again, thank you all so much for attending today. And just to kind of give up and uh, give in summary is, the time is now. This is, this is not just a, a conversation, this is something that's happening. And, and if you're missing the boat, um, 
you're going to get left behind. The digitization is here, it is happening now, and it's happening faster and faster as we look ahead to 2021. And this new digitization is just going to continue. We're gonna see further convergence of technologies, not just in the verticals and industries we spoke about today, but many others as well. And just to recap these trends, today we talked about edge, we talked about blockchain, we talked about artificial intelligence, the industrial 4.0, the industry IoT, we talked about robotics and manufacturing, digital, twins, the idea of taking what was once physical and mapping that to a digital infrastructure. We talked about autonomous. We talked about the localization or hyper-localization of logistics. The idea of our immersive worlds starting to rise, looking at space and space technologies and also voice assistance. These are just the beginning of trends here in 2020 as we look to 2021. There's a lot more to unpack here. And as Alexis said, that we will be doing an upcoming series. And so we didn't get a time to go into many use cases or call out specific companies as I'm sure some of you have questions about, um, but that's what we're gonna be doing in the upcoming webinars. So in the coming two weeks and following all the way up leading to uh, the holidays in November, uh, myself, Alexa, and the plug and play team here will be doing a series of webinars on the industrial 4.0. So looking at this new information age, what it means and how it's being applied. So we're gonna be talking about the automation and future supply chains. We're gonna be talking about digital infrastructures in the enterprise, the state of distributed and decentralized applications and the future of connectivity. So how edge and 5G and some of the other connectivity that Alexa mentioned, how that applies, some of the use cases further uh, that we spoke about and then also some of those additional uh, companies and applications that you guys may have questions about as well. And so again, a lot to unpack. We're happy to answer questions. What you saw here previously, uh, we, we do have available online. The landscapes are available at topionetworks.com. Again, a partner here at Moeco. And um, also the data that you're going to be uh, in these presentations will be shared afterwards, I believe. Uh, we'll check with the plug and play team, but also feel free to reach out to Alexa and I, not just for this presentation, but also for any questions, comments, et cetera, around um, what Alexa had projected about what we do here at the company, and then also any further details uh, around this uh, as well. And also uh, just a, a shout out to uh, Ali and, and Omar's team. Uh, we also are, are partnered with a big conference next week called Edge Computing World, where we will uh, all be taking place. Uh, and we have discount codes for everybody that would like to uh, attend the conference uh, as well. And so I'll circulate those with the team. And again, thank you. And anything Moeco related, we're here and happy to answer questions for the next uh, five or 10 minutes. All right. So let's see. Last time we really had a great amount of questions that uh, I, I felt with that we, we don't have the time to, to answer all of them, but definitely will uh, be happy to get some more um, questions either here or emailed to us, both, both works. And I really started several great conversation via email after the last webinar and really helped some companies to come up with the ideas of how they could use the technologies for their benefit. So happy to share that. Absolutely. And again, big thank you to the plug and play team uh, as a whole and also to the new materials and the IOT team for helping make this possible. Allie, Tiffany and Omer, thank you very much. And again, a happy birthday to Alexa and a big thank you to the entire team at Moeco for helping put all of this together as well. And a thank you to you. And as Alexa mentioned, we are available 24-7, 365 since we live digital lives more than ever. So do, do please reach out uh, with any Q&A. And uh, Allie and Omer, we'll, we'll turn it over to you. And uh, yeah, sure. Thank you so much um, for putting this on. Uh, as Kyle and Alexa both have alluded to, this is number one of, of a series. So um, Tiffany and I will be following up with the attendees after this to send you the recording, which which we've done, um, the the slides as well, and um, also just the, the, the other webinars that will follow. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, my email is just alexandra at tnptc.com. I'm happy to, to 
help you with any follow-ups with the Moeco team. Um, and yeah, thank you again to Kyle and Alexa. Alexa, thank you so much for joining us on your birthday, um, all the way from Portugal. Uh, we really appreciate that. And um, yeah, thank you everybody for attending and we hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Alexandra. Thanks everybody for attending. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.